real estate is about freedom, choice freedom, time freedom, and money freedom, and the impact you can make with that freedom. But it doesn't come without cost. Your freedom takes work. That's why Neil Timmons brings together the tools you need to build your real estate legacy, from tips and tricks to interviews with industry titans. It's all here in one place. Real Grit. Let's get to it. Hey everybody, welcome to Real Grit. I'm Neil Timmons. I'm excited to have you here. Say, with me today, I'm, I'm excited about this because we talk a lot about uh, single family and multifamily uh, real estate. So we're going to venture off a little different direction here uh, and touch on a subject which which I participate in uh, in a pretty good pretty good way. Uh, so I'm excited here to talk to, to Gabe Peterson. He hails from sunny Seattle, Washington. He's in the commercial real estate uh, space. He's got a focus on self-storage and mobile home parks. And he also has the uh, the podcast there, and you can see it behind him. It's the Real Estate Investing Club. Gabe, how you doing? Neil, I'm doing great. Thank you uh, for having me on. You bet. Thanks a ton for joining me. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm excited. Absolutely. To, I'm excited to dive into uh, to your background and also what you know what you do because it's uh, for a lot of folks uh, who are in the single family space. You know, they have interest uh, either putting dollars or putting some effort into the spaces that you you really focus on. So I'm excited to, to dig in there. Tell me, uh, let's start here. How'd you get into just real estate? Whatever aspect you started in, how'd you get into real estate to begin with? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, I feel like a, like a lot of people, I got started in single family. Yeah. Um, so I was, uh, let's see, I'm going to take you way back. Uh, so I graduated college uh, with a degree in philosophy. I was going to go to law school, but you know, didn't really pan out, didn't want to do it. Um, so I got a job in corporate, started working there, found that I didn't like that either. Just the drive, the commute, not really having a lot of uh, control over my schedule. Yeah. And so, um, I started looking for ways, you know, I wanted to build a business. And so I started looking for ways to do that. You know, what can I do to build a business? What can I do to generate income? Um, the first few attempts uh, were, were utter failures. Uh, well, they weren't failures. I made money, but <laughs> not too much. I, I started an e-commerce store. I did um, digital marketing. Uh, but it wasn't until I flipped my first house um, with a friend of mine down here in Tacoma that I, you know, made at the time what was a uh, life-changing money. I think the first flip, you know, we're in Seattle, it's a great market. So we yeah. kind of, um, we, we could make mistakes that other people in different market couldn't make. That's so the right. first flip, I think we made $87,000, Wow! which to me at the time, I mean, that was, that was, I could retire. I was like, that was as much money. <laughs> as I needed. <laughs> Get the Rolex. I made it. Yeah, right. right. Uh, what year was that? That was, um, I think that was 2014, 2014, 2015, okay. one of those two. Yeah. yeah. And it took me a long time to actually quit corporate. Um, so I did that flip and then, you know, I, I kept working my job, um, and then just look for other properties, um, did a flip or two here. I did started to do wholesaling. Um, and I didn't leave corporate until maybe two years ago. And that's when I, you know, jumped into commercial and, uh, and really, Put the put the pedal to the metal there. What was that? Uh, what was that bridge that allowed you, or what was it that compelled you to finally leave corporate? Oh man, um, there wasn't really. I think it was just a number of things. I'd you know I'd worked in corporate for, and this there's nothing against working in corporate. By the way, I it's you know some people really love it, and so I'm, I, whenever I say things about corporate. I'm not against it. It's just for me, it was not a good fit. And I'd, I'd done it for probably seven years. Um, I think it was seven or eight years. And then I just kind of had it. And I was like, I need to, you know, pull the trigger. I need to just jump. Um, and I think I had like, a, not, I can't remember how much I had probably 30 or $40,000 in the bank that I was, you know, I could live on. Um, and I had a, I'd purchased a duplex that cash flowed. Okay. And so in my mind, you know, I had this cash flow coming in. It wasn't a lot. It was like, $500 a month or something like that. Um, and then I had, you know, a, ne a small nest egg. And so I said, fine, I'm just going to do it. This is, uh, you know, it's now or never. And so I just left and, uh, and here I am. Wow. I mean, it was a lot more dirty than that, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, looking back, you're always like, thank God I made it. But there were times that I almost didn't make it. So yeah. Yeah. What, um, all right. So you, you, you took the leap, you went uh, full time and then what did that, you know, your first year full time, what was the focus and what did you get into? 
Um, okay. Let's see. The first year I was doing flips. And so I, uh, I was in single family. Um, I only, I did essentially two, well, one and a half flips. Cause I bought a duplex and I was flipping it and I flipped one side. Um, and then I bought a single family. So I did one and a half flips the first year. Okay. And I, I'm sure I'm pretty sure that year I was negative. Um, because you know, flips are, it's great. Um, for a lot of people, but it's also that you need to have a lot of very specific knowledge, um, yes. to do flips well, or you just have to have a kick-ass team. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't have either of those. And so I did a lot of the work myself on those flips. Um, and it didn't, you know, we didn't make as much as we had hoped. Uh, I kind of was belayed by the, the experience before where I thought, you know, it's so easy to make a flip because the Seattle market was going up like a hockey stick. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm sorry. Continue. What, what was the, what was how the did you make a, the, All right. So you're, you're primarily doing flips in the first year, full time in, in, uh, out of the corporate world. And mm-hmm. then at what point did you make a transition into commercial? So let's see, I, uh, commercial was about two years ago. Um, and I decided, well, I knew that I didn't want to do single family anymore. Um, and again, nothing against single family. Some people make great you had you know, portfolios yeah, out right. of single families. Yep. Um, but I just, I didn't like, I didn't like flips, um, because I don't think I was that good at it. Um, and I just, it was too capital intensive. Like you have to have a lot of money just laid out in order to do flips. Um, at the time I just didn't have all that money and I didn't want to manage a whole bunch of single families. Um, you know, I had, I had done rentals, I had managed a few single families, but I, it was just too labor intensive. Um, and the problem with single, single families is a lot of property managers don't want them. Um, unless you have, you know, 500 single family properties, property managers are like, you know, that's not really worth it for me. It's one door. Um, and it's not, you know, which just means that you're going to have to do a lot of the work. Um, so I knew I didn't want to do that. I was looking for other, other avenues to go. Um, I'd considered multifamily. I pretty much considered everything. Uh, but someone I knew at the time was, um, going into mobile home parks, and uh, I I'd read a bunch about how mobile home parks and self-storage, they're, uh, they are historically resistant to recessions. Um, right. And so that's pretty much it. That's what solved it for me. So we bought, uh, I bought the first mobile home park um, about a year and a half-ish ago okay. um, in George, Washington. And then I bought a second mobile home park. Um, then I switched over to self-storage and I bought four self-storage this year in 2021 um, and hoping to do double that at least in 2022. Okay. And so just for the audience sake, we're recording this in the very last day of 2021. Yeah. So we've, yep. <laughs> we've got, a, we've got a very good, we've got a very accurate picture of what 21 closed out to be. Yep. So, uh, where are those, uh, the self storage, where are they located just relative to you? Are they in your backyard, if you will, or that you got them spread across the country? Um, so the mobile home parks are in, in the same state, but okay. self storage, uh, there's actually, I found to be, there's more competition in self storage. Mm-hmm. Um, and I live in Washington and, you know, there's, a, there are tons of self storage here. It's just that the, the cap rates are ridiculously low. Um, and so I started looking in Washington, I was going to, you know, find something to buy in Washington. I just couldn't find anything that was like a great deal. Mm-hmm. And so then I just started, I, I, um, took off the Washington lens and I started marketing nationally, essentially just to any, I, I bought, um, I bought a list of self storage facilities and then, you know, skip trace the list and started marketing to this those owners, um, just, and I didn't really care what the state was. I just marketed nationally. Yep. Uh, and I got four of, or three of them are in Texas. Um, I don't, you know, I st- Texas was at the beginning of my list and I just got really good deals in Texas. So I bought those three. And then the last one is in Arkansas. Um, so right now it's all in the Sun Belt. None of them are near me at all. Um, yep. but they're, they're working out pretty well. That's great. Sorry. Right. So as you can when you say marketed to these folks, what, what do you mean by that? How did you, how did you, what, what, what did you do to reach out? Um, the, the standard stuff that I'm pretty much all investors out there, out there do, um, letters, RVMs, um, texting, it's just straight seller direct. So for those yep. coming from here, we're in the single family world who are seller direct. It's the same exact application relative to self-storage. Yep. Exactly. Same thing on the mobile side, the mobile same home thing on the mobile side. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I found that, uh, I mean, the mobile side actually letters work better, um, direct, you know, direct letters because there are more mom and pop owners out there for mobiles. Right. Um, and a lot of those guys don't have, you know, they're, they, 
they're not going to pick up a call. Um, they're not going to return a call. Sometimes they don't even have text messaging. So sure. the letters, you, you get a better rate for mobile home parks and RV parks with, yeah. um, you know, letters than you do with, uh, any other asset class, at least that I've experienced. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it doesn't matter what asset class you're doing. It's always the same. In my opinion, it's just direct, direct marketing. And, uh, yep. you know, those it's pretty standard. All right. So bring me back to, uh, you make the decision you want to get in you, the first one you bought was a mobile home. So let's start there. Uh, you made the decision. I want to be in this, this space. How long did it take from Mark, from, you know, your first, first proactive marketing piece to actually close on one? Uh, six months. And I know this one specifically Yeah, <laughs> because I, I remember, you know, we, we, uh, it was me and a partner. Um, we were going down the mobile home route Yeah, and we started in, um, uh, wait, no, it was, it was eight months. So we started in November of, um, 2018, 2019, I think it was 2018. Okay. And it wasn't until, uh, what, June or so, so July under, of 2019. Yeah. We got it under contract. I think we closed, we actually closed, closed in August. Okay. Um, but we had, you know, that park under contract, I think it was in July or May or something like that. Okay. Um, so it took a long time and I, yeah. I, we almost quit multiple times in that interim because, you know, when you don't know how to do something, uh, you know, you're talking, you're, you're underwriting new, a new asset class. You're, you're speaking a new language. There's so many times that, um, you know, deals fall through and there's yeah. those, each one of those times you're just like, God, I want to quit, but you know, we kept at it and, uh, we got one. It's not quite like a single family in the sense of there's like, a you know, I'll, I'll, I'll exaggerate like a gazillion single family homes. Right. I mean, they're just <laughs> everywhere, they're just everywhere. And I mean, if you want to go work, find multiple deals a month, you can mobile homes, not, you know, commercial, let's say in and of itself, it's not the same way. Right. Yep. It takes, um, a greater focus and concentration and, and just a commitment to see it through just yep. knowing that it takes longer. So, what made you, you know, you, you, you get to a spot where you're like, okay, I kind of want to quit because this is terrible. I mean, it's taking forever. You, it's hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel, especially on your first one. What, what was it that had you keep going? Uh, I, I honestly, I think it was just pigheadedness and like stubbornness. Like I decided on this course and I was just yeah. like, fuck no. Or sorry, I apologize for saying I was just like, I'm going down this route. This is happening. Um, we're going to make this work. Uh, it was probably the, um, probably two or three months into it. We had, uh, it was like a, man, I wish I had these numbers. It was like 120 space RV park, which, um, is a lot is, you know, it's a good size RV or RV mobile home park, right. um, that we had under contract. We were going to buy it. Uh, but the, the seller at the last minute, um, I can't remember how it happened, but negotiations fell apart at the very last minute. And that mm -hmm. just like crushed my soul. And that yeah, I was really right. close at that point to be to be like, you know, thrown in the towel. But for some reason I just kept going. I don't really have a, a specific answer. I just, just kept going. I was like, I have to do this. <laughs> just something internal said, you got to keep going. Yep. Yeah. 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 No, that's good. Uh, how'd you get, how'd you get educated in, in, in those ED space? Um, I, I bought books, mostly just watching things online. Um, just YouTube and YouTube and, university. Yep. YouTube university. The, mm -hmm. My, I mean, originally, you know, back in 2014, I bought a course um, from Matt Tyrell, which is this guy in California. He does a bunch of flips. Um, and that's that was the first I think I paid like five thousand dollars for that. Yeah. Um, and I, so I did buy a course at one point and that I actually really I, I, I accredit a lot of my initial success to that because it do, did give me a very good framework to work with. Yeah. And that uh, Matt Tyrell, he was very um, he was very big on numbers. He was like, you have to hit your numbers in order to have success. And, and that, that mind frame or that mindset is, yep. I feel like it's very important for, for real estate. Cause you do, you got to hit your numbers. Um, you're going to put out, I don't know, 10, 20 offers before you get something that actually works. So, right. um, you just got to hit those numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Which one, uh, in your opinion, which one do you find, uh, between mobile home and the, the self-storage, which one's easier to manage from your standpoint? Oh, self-storage hands self -storage, down. Yeah, right, I love right, right. self-storage. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. What's the makeup of your team like today? Um, so in terms of team, it's just, it's really just me and my, and my, uh, my significant other running, you know, our, our company. Yep. Um, but we have a ton of people that we work with. So we have, I've got VAs helping with marketing. Yep. Um, I've got what, two or three of those guys. Uh, I have, 
bunch of brokers that I work with. Um, each property has a boots on the ground that I work with. Yep. Um, but in terms of like, you know, our specific company, it's yeah. just me and me and my significant. Yeah, company. no, it's cool for people to hear because uh, a lot of times I think you have to have such a, a built out core uh, in the in the back, but you really don't need that because there are so many resources that are built into the systems certain, but even more so that are a little easier to plug into on the commercial side than the residential side um, because of who's on the ground, because of the professional management that can, can exist, mm -hmm. although it makes yeah. it a little, it's a little different in your world. Exactly. And that's why I, um, you know, you got to find your stride. You got to find the thing yeah. that fits you. But I, I really do suggest people, you know, take a deep look at commercial because, uh, when you have professional property management in place, man, that makes things easy. It's just, it takes, it's a big load off your shoulders. Um, and if you can't find that, you know, if you don't have enough units in the, in the single family world, then you can't take advantage of that opportunity. But, um, but pretty much anything in commercial will not anything, but many things in commercial will, will allow you to have that, uh, that property management in place. I would echo what you just said. I've got, I have a single family portfolio and then I have a commercial portfolio and we've got property external property managers on both. And it's night and day, the difference yeah. between the property managers. I'm not saying just the product or the unit mix or the tenants, certainly those are all different, but the reporting, the, just the, what they bring to the table, each of them independently is it's, it's night and day. Yep. Yeah. Yep. No, you're, you're exactly right. Let's just, I'm going to move on to our final segment, what I call four for impact. I'm going to pull up your favorite quote, unless you know it off the top of your head. I've got it right in front of me. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. Marcus Aurelius said it. Why is that so impactful for you? Um, Marcus Aurelius is, uh, his book meditations is like my favorite book ever. It's yeah. just, uh, if anybody, you know, is not familiar with it, it's basically Marcus Aurelius, you know, Roman emperor, he was mm -hmm. on the campaign trail and he just kind of uh, jotted down his, his, you know, thoughts in his mind. So it's not like a book that you'd read. It's just, you know, musings that he had while he was out there in the world, um, and how to live a good life. And so Marcus Aurelius is awesome. I love this quote because it kind of, it really distills, I don't know, many things in life, especially in business, um, down to the core, it's, it, it, it comes down to your mind, like everything, anything can happen on the, in the external world. Um, but your reaction to that is really dependent upon how you see the event and how you, uh, how you, how you react to it is how you see it. Um, and you have, you have that choice. You have the choice to see it as something catastrophic, or you can look for the silver lining. Um, you can accept it and just, and move forward. So that's all within your grasp. You just kind of, you have to, uh, take, take hold of your own mind and, uh, and how you're seeing the events that are, that are occurring. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. What do you think holds most investors back? Uh, let me frame this differently. What do you think holds most investors back from making the leap from single family into commercial? Uh, I mean, probably fear and, um, what's the word, the, um, there's a, there's a word for this. It's like, uh, when you don't feel, you know, you feel like you're out of your, out of your league, like you're, uh, oh, yeah, 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 whatever that word is. Um, they just don't feel like they, you know, they're, they're good enough or whatever that they, they can do it. Um, commercial, when I first got into it, I was, you know, there's, there's a fear there because I was like, oh, it's commercial. It's big time. You know, it's something that I just, I'm not good enough for yet. I don't have enough single family experience, but that's not the case. If real estate is real estate. Um, you just, you just do it. And so you just got to, get over it and make the leap. And, uh, it's all, and it's all, learn. Uh, it's all a story we tell ourselves. Is it not? Yep. Exactly. That, that, that once you learn it, 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 while it's different, there's no doubt it's not, it's not magical though. Yeah. And it's not impossible. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, it's really just a decision outside of real estate. What are you most uh, passionate about? Uh, outside of real estate. Um, well, right now in COVID, it's a lot different than when it was non-COVID. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> uh, during, I mean, these times, I I just spend a lot of time with my dog, my significant other, yeah. um, reading, you know, working out. But before that, I used to travel a lot and uh, do jujitsu. I'm a, I'm a big fan of jujitsu. Oh, okay, um, great. But since then, it's uh, you know things have changed. So I'm looking forward to 2022. It's going to be the year of no COVID. That's my. Uh, that's my war cry here. It can't, it can't, it can't come soon enough, can it? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm with you there. What's your favorite way to make uh, an impact in your community? Uh, in my community, well, 
first, it all starts with, in my opinion, it starts with who you're, you know, in your direct, um, in your direct life, you know, your sure. friends, your family. That's right. And that, and this is going to sound cliche, but I really feel like presence is a big thing. And mm-hmm. when it comes, why I say that is because, you know, especially as a business owner, it's so easy to get caught in your mind and, and mm-hmm. thinking about like, you know, what do I have to do next? What do I have to do next? Mm-hmm. Um, but the best thing you can do is, is stop doing that. Be present with the people you're with um, and, and not, you know, not project yourself into the future. Um, and that that's kind of a cliche response, but I feel like it's, it's uh, very pertinent because, um, you know, I've been trying to focus on that myself being more present with the people around me so I can, you know, give the gift of yourself to, to those you're with. Yeah. You know, it, it also means at the same time, put, put these things down when, when you're with somebody, right? Because Absolutely. although you're just physically present, doesn't mean you're actually present. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, tell me, uh, for, for, for 2022, what's it look like for you? Where are you guys headed? Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Um, I do think COVID restrictions are going to lessen. So mm-hmm. I, I, I feel like there's going to be a big kind of resurgence of energy just across all sectors. Um, and so I feel like there's going to be a lot of opportunity there. Uh, self-storage is where I'm, I'm mostly focused. You know, I'm, I'm also keeping my eye on mobile home, um, RV parks too, but I want to, I want to do eight acquisitions this year. Um, yeah just to double what we did last year and uh, see where we go from there. Yeah, that's great. For people who want to follow you, they want to connect with you online or they want to learn more about the podcast, where can they find you? Uh, the the best way is the real estate investing club.com. It's the real estate investing with an ING club.com. Um, check us out there. You know, we got a podcast uh, and, and all that jazz. So you can check us out there. Also Kaizen Properties USA is our, uh, is the firm, you know, the, the investment firm website but unless you have a mobile home park or a self-storage facility that's probably not you're not gonna be interested in that one but yeah. the real estate investing club.com is, is the place perfect to go. we'll make sure we get the links here in the in the show notes well hey i gave i really appreciate you taking the time up to, to connect here and and share share your experiences and the uniqueness from moving um, because most people don't individually uh, or don't end up doing it right is making that leap from single family over but you've got a unique perspective about um you know, finding your path and finding what it is that you were really, really good at. And it sounds like you found a terrific home. So I'm excited to see what, uh, to connect with you here in the future and look back and see what 22, what you did to 22. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It was a good meeting as well. And thank you very much for, for being here and uh, letting me chat with you in front of your, uh, in front of your audience. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, uh, for everybody here at Real Grit, I'm Neil Timmons reminding you that real estate requires real grit. I'll see you next time. If you like our content and want more, you can access it at realgritpodcast.com. You hear it guest after guest. Instinctively, you already know it. But let me call it out. The most expensive action is inaction. The real estate market is full of opportunities. You just need to uncover them. You can build a business that lasts for years, makes monumental impact in the lives of those that you love. It's not just about business, but about the freedom you get because of it. Have you ever heard the saying, if you want to go fast, go alone? If you want to go far, go together. I believe that partnering is essential. In fact, I partner with hardworking investors all the time. The point is that you can get a lot further with the right partner. Let me say it again, the right partner. If you've ever thought about partnering with anyone, or if you have a partner now, I encourage you to download my free partner and profit guide, which includes the top five must answer questions to evaluate a profitable partnership. You can find it at www.legacyimpactpartners.com. I'll see you in the next episode.